first victory, first bit of money in the bank. And that's the, we're seeing the smoke a lot towards Catwalk here on the piss around. Yeah, it does help with uh, T's going to low tunnel as well, not getting popped by CT's moving towards short. But there are no such CT's here for Cloud9 on this occasion. They've got two players over towards the long area. You can see Estrada setting up for a split immediately. And uh, we might have Stroud being caught in isolation here towards the pit, but Skadoodle's coming back now. Nice headshot for him. So far, so good for Skadoodle. He's got himself two frags, actually. The bomb is down towards Long as well, so that last player has to be careful. That might put a spanner in the works. Long is bit, sorry, the sight's being taken, but the CT still have control of Long. And that bomb is still in a weird place. It needs to be taken, surely. Astralis needs to collect it. What is going on over there, actually? Why hasn't Zipex taken the bomb? It's a bit of a weird situation. I mean, he's, I guess, waiting for the, the ramp. Oh, is it on the box, actually? It might be actually up on the box. Oh no! Oh, what is this? Look at the bomb! How does it get there? It must have flown up there when somebody got headshot. They can't retrieve the bomb, Dan! They need to boost the player oh, to get it. God. They can collect it with a boost. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll, uh, I guess that, we'll wait to find out. Maybe they customize such as well. There's, that's a nice one. Kirby able to take down Slemmy there in middle. So three versus four. Now let's see if they can get the boost going to collect this bomb. It's in a bit of an awkward spot here. There you go. Hey. He's got the bomb. Brilliant. All right, so 20 seconds left to plot it. That run. Is, that's fine. They've got to run. Everything's fine. They got this. Here they go, up catwalk into the bomb site. There's no messing around at this point. And C9 are probably wondering what the hell's going on, but it's okay because Shadow will already pick up the first frag. Kirby running and gunning. He's gonna connect something here, but it's so difficult going for the play. He's got four seconds to do it, just enough time. And ooh, the nine oh in Kirby to get it onto Skadoodle. Three players left there for Kirby to find. Seven HP. He is surely screwed at this point. And he oh gets knocked no! back. Stewie in River Revenge. Good stuff there. It is London after all, Dan. Knife Prime is high here at the ECL for ECS is it? finals. Is it really? Is it really? Chance? <laughs> well, we've got two knives in the pistol round, Dan. I'd say Knife Prime is high. Fair enough, fair enough. First run going the way of Cloud9. Difficult start here for Astralis. And again, when, when somebody gets taken down and they're holding the bomb. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> I love the slow sound. It's beautiful. Slow mo for the win. And another one. When 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 a player carrying the bomb gets taken down, then the bomb flies up, it flies forwards at kind of a, a 90 degree angle, upwards and forwards, which you have to be careful about when you're running from short onto the A site as well, because it can fall in CT spawn if you're too close to the ridge. But here we go, Astralis going for a fast play in towards the B bomb site. They're going to be wanting to get another plot here. That's going to be the key. Two players left, and uh, it looks like it's not going to happen. The Bex last man standing, and they will be quickly shut down. It was a cheap investment by Astralis. Didn't pay off, though. No, it did not, but they will have some AKs. NAWP. Obviously, the knife kills $1,500 reward, so it's a pretty hefty reward to get those. And, uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see whether C9 can deal with this round, because they're going to have, overall, you know, worse equipment going into it. So that's going to be fun to see how that uh, works out. We've got Device on the Orb. He's got himself Kevlar and a helmet as well. And you can see that Astralis have really sacrificed in picking up grenades to have all these AKs. And I'm surprised that one player didn't opt for a Galil, but we're going to have to hold that for right now, because we have a bit of interesting play going on. Schnaud going for the aggression up Catwalk. What is he going to find there? Dupree up close. Oh, Dupree wins the day, though. He's got another player to find. It's Slemmy. And uh, Slemmy will get taken out by Device. So that's not going to be a good play in the end. Obviously, C9, they're trying to mitigate or level the disadvantage because they had worse weaponry going for the aggression. But a two-for-one trade, that's just not going to work out for them. Yeah, always nice to see some CT aggression. Perhaps something that was missing in the previous match. At least from one of the teams. Man advantage here for Astralis at the moment, moving towards one of these two sites now. You can see the uh, setup here for Cloud9, trying to hold on to that middle area if they can. And it seems, uh, well, both players playing outside of the B-bombs are here. We'll see if they go back with a good timing, because Astralis are creeping in and they may be here for a nasty surprise, although the flashbangs will come in that will tell them what is going on. Hot flash coming in for Street to have a look, but he's going to get caught by it as well. And there are players all over the place, and that should mark the end of the round there. Two versus four. Skadoodle on a scout. You can see nothing, just rescuing uh, M4, dropping the Famas there. And it seems Astralis will get an early round on the board. 
Right, so that's exactly how it needs to go for them. And uh, Cloud9 on the money, they're fine. I mean, they actually have enough to have a very strong buy, especially, especially if they say they could they could lose both these players and still be fine on the buy, uh, pretty much. I mean, they get $1,400 from this loss. Of course, Shroud and Slimmy are a little bit low on the funds there, so saving two weapons is pretty much perfect. And C9 will have a nice buy going into the next round. But the uh, interesting thing is that, you know, this round, it started off with better weapons for Astralis, but they had no utility almost at all. And now we're going to have a situation where it's, it's uh, Astralis on loads of utilities. So they, they have so much to work with. It's going to be really interesting to see how they play that out because they know that Cloud9 have one more buy in them. Indeed, the buy is coming out here for the CT side. Lots of grenades as well, so they're not going to be short of equipment here. Our Cloud9, Skidoodle on the AWP. Just the one AWP, we do know that Stewie can pick up the second one as well. Had some highlight reels on the tubes as of late. Maybe that'll come into play a bit later on. So the corner gonna get smoked off here. That can cause a bit of a retreat from CTs, although Cloud9 will opt for aggression once again. And they will see that Astralis are in fact not going to take that area. We saw Shocks putting down similar smokes in the uh, previous last two as well just to try and stretch the CT side, pull people from other directions. And indeed, you see uh, Astralis trying to figure out what the setup is here of the Cancera side. Not overextending, they went to Shroud in CT spot. Nothing gonna be pushing through B. Takes down both players as well. That is a very good response by Cloud9. Finally traded, but that's a great advantage for them. Holding the site is Dewey as well. Device trying to even things up, but he's the only man standing now. Yeah, smart stuff from Stewie not to peek in that situation and let's see if Device can do something here because at the very least he wants to get some damage done in this round and he, he can afford to, to make plays here that puts his AWP at risk to do that because saving, I mean his team, you know, they just, they just won a round so they won't really have enough money for a really solid buy here so he wants to get some damage in but he can't do it, good push coming in from Semi and can he steal away the AWP? Yes, he, no, he did not steal away the AWP. So, we're going to have a 3-1 situation. Astralis able to scrap together a buy. And again, it's going to be a little bit lackluster, but it will feature... It's a fair amount of rifles. They've got three AKs on the board, a Tech-9, a Galil, and a handful of grenades. So, we'd expect a faster round here from Astralis. They don't really have the utility to place too slowly. Yeah, you can see Carrigan on the Tech-9 only. Very limited grenades, and this time they're going to force their way into the long area, but there are smokes here for both sides, and smoke flashbangs in the smoke will cause problems. The CTs choose to retreat, they'll choose safety, trying to avoid Bedlam, avoid those trades. So they'll take control of the long area. You can see Skudoodle holding things down on short for the time being. If they manage to lose both, then Cloud9 will be in trouble. Carrigan, the only man over towards short at the moment, trying to play those close quarters engagements with the Tech-9. Skudoodle will be completely hidden in his current angle. And indeed, it seems uh, Astralis will uh, just leave, well, it could leave one player in long, but it's, uh, even if they completely abandon it, it's unlikely to be retaken by the CTs. That said, they'll want to keep people there for the split. It'll leave uh, very little hiding places on the A side. And here comes the push. Stemi can only take one player down, and Skidoo will have to move back, put a Molotov down. And again, with no one on long, they kind of have to abandon the site here. Yeah, there's no utility for Astralis. They had one smoke, it's been used. And that's basically it. So, somehow they've actually managed to take the side with that because of the nice entry frag that was featured over towards Catwalk. And now a uh, bomb can be planted, but the retake efforts are going to be in here. Pretty much everybody streaming in from Catwalk there. Nothing able to get one. The trade onto the vice. And three versus three now. More grenades being thrown in here. Not much left in that sense, but it's Zipex there. He's creeping at the back. He's setting a timer on the CTs because that flank, as soon as it comes into play, that's pretty much round over. Cloud9 will need to win the bomb site before that happens. Dupree gets the first frag. There goes Zipex. Dupree and Kirby, though, more than enough to hold. A will be safe from those CTs, and they'll pick up around straight away again. So good stuff there from, from Astralis to bounce back straight away. One round ahead, our Cloud9 at the moment, but uh, not really ahead in the economy at present. $3,000 roughly on each person. Just pistols in your flashbang for the North Americans and the Canadians as well. So let's see what they could do with this. Putting the uh, numbers towards the middle area, which I quite like actually. Don't see uh, this kind of stack very often, and it does make sense because it's very common for those mid pushes to come in. Astralis though, going for a straight V. 
you often you can often find people uh, will try and walk into the B bomb site with an AWP looking towards the site itself, and the rifler to his right looking to the AWP's left. On the anti eco, it's a very nice, simple one, and they've picked the right spot. But Stewie just charging through the smoke there. Vintage Stewie stuff coming in, and there are traits on both sides. Cloud9 continuing to cause anarchy here, and it's Slemmy versus two. He's picked up an AK as well, and he's taken Kiabi down. The madness here for C9 just charging through the door here. Harrigan with a lot to do. Going for the bomb, but he's going to get absolutely wrecked. What an unlikely round. And Stratus walked into the site. There was no one on the site that. Wow, that was pretty sick. Semi no Kevlar right at the end there as well. Easy headshot. 4 to 2, and a very unlikely win there from Cloud9. And Astralis's money has been pretty much wrecked there. So it's just round for round for round. I mean, if the trend continues, Astralis is going to pick up this next one, but they don't have much money to do it. And they are thinking about you know, how much they invested. They're actually going to err on the side of caution and pick up a couple of Deagles and a PT50. And that is that. Not even a flashbang. So let's see what damage they can do. That's pretty much the objective there. A couple kills, you know, just keep the economy low a little bit, or negatively affected for Cloud9, that is. And uh, have a strong fire round to follow up in the following rounds. And so far, Astralis, you know, they're just uh, locked out of most of these, these early spots where they could peak because of smokes. And Cloud9, uh, Cloud9 not really playing anything, anything risky at the moment. Just sitting on pretty good positions. They have good ranges, they've got you know, early warning systems. And we can start to see Astralis creeping up catwalk here. And we've got uh, the couple Beagles leading the way, but there is an AWP there. Skadoodle is in place. Nice little flashbang. You can see that Cloud9 have a good read on what's going on. So the Gauntlet run is going to be coming in, trying to get that bomb on the site now. Again, the key is to get a bomb plant here. But then a shoulder peeking that they need to just run for it, use the number to get to the site here. But they're just slowly creeping out and allowing themselves to get taken down one by one. Really, you've got to use the cooldown time of the Orc to just try and go as far as possible. It's like animals are farming wood down when they're trying to go over the motorway, a turtle gets wrecked, the rabbit gets wrecked. Just got to go with the numbers. Bomb gets nowhere near the site on that occasion. Three round lead for C9 at the moment. And still no buy coming in for Astralis. It will be a, a double eco here. They've picked up some smoke grenades on this occasion. So let's see what they choose to do with them. Yeah, we actually have a fast boost on Catwalk here from Cloud9, so they're opting to go for a bit of aggression. Now, this is going to be really cool because the Skidoo gets the peek into lower dark. Timing should work out just right. And there it is. Skidoodle able to connect there onto device. Very, very good understanding of timing there from the Cloud9 side. And now the rest of the team here for Astralis trying to work their way into this B bomb site, but there is Stewie. And he is doing some damage. Nothing as well, chiming in with that M4, and it's looking pretty good here. It's just going to be Zipex left at this point, and he's got nothing but a P250. Yeah, he should be soon to go down. Bomb in control for the CT side as well. Just one weapon down, that's in the bomb side, so uh, not much for them to cover, nothing finishing off the last one as well. Nice anti-eco here from Cloud9. Surviving the four players, great for the economy. And uh, things are changing in the Cloud9 buy, we'll get to that in a moment. The buy's coming in for Astralis, they're gonna pick up an AWP onto device as per usual, but he is helmetless, which is a, a, a key thing, because obviously those M4s will one-tap him now if he comes in the connection with them. But indeed, Street 2 k has picked up a slight weapon down. So, uh, pretty default start here for the CTs. It's taken, uh, taken over long, with two players in B. Very, very standard stuff from them. Astralis actually, though, they are at the moment just sort of sitting in uh, suicide for quite a prolonged period of time with a couple of players. You can see device that I think is boosted up, perhaps. Uh, but now they start to make the move now towards Xbox and Catwalk. And normally you would expect the T's to want to sort of entry in towards middle, get some information. Not going to do that though. There's smoke down, and you can see they can't really get any info towards long because there is a. Well, I mean, I guess there's info enough. They've got Skadoodle there showing his orb. So Astralis actually have a decent picture so far, but that said, maybe Cloud9 don't have a good enough picture because they're going for the aggression here in Upper Dark to get that information, and they spot nobody. So this is really interesting right now because Cloud9, when they see something like this, they're thinking, all right, it's, it's got to be that A split that's getting set up right now. Will Carrigan be able to detect this in time? He's 
Obviously, the man that uh, has that job is he's towards the B tunnels. But it looks like Cloud9 are just going to be happy sneaking Stewie into T spawn with an AWP. That's a madness. Yeah, but the problem is he's going to be very far away. Bearing, my, bearing in mind the time that's left on the clock here, I'm not sure if that's the right decision because surely the push is coming in and he's not going to be able to help his teammates. There are double orbs here, but again, Stewie's miles away now. He's actually got a frag onto Carrigan though, so he stopped the flanker. And there are two plays left here, so it's worked out in the end for Cloud9. Device and Zipex remain. There are 20 seconds left. They're stuck on short. There are Molotovs all over the place. They are without places to go. HG's flying in as well, and Stu 2 k is doing more damage from the top of mid. Flashbangs, everything. This is glorious from Cloud9. Yeah, what a great round, and it's so smart as well to take that risk into up a dog instead of allowing a team like Astralis to just run a set piece on top of you. And that was the problem with NIP versus G2, that NIP were so passive, they would allow G2 all the space in the world, and G2 could do whatever they wanted. And there you can see Cloud9, they're not resting on their laurels, they're not resting on the, on their, on the buffer of rounds that they have, and their good economy, they're using that round, that round lead, they're using that good economy to take risks. Granted, NIP didn't really have good economy or round lead, but either way, sometimes you just gotta take the risks. Cloud9 do it well, and now they're up against another safe round, and Stewie's back in again with the AWP. Great shot, follow up as well, and that is uh, now two frags in a row for Cloud9. Just one push left to deal with in this round towards Long. It's Slemmy, who's uh, the first man. There's two friends as well. He's got Shroud there with him, as well as Skadoodle. So pretty strong defense here on Long. And the cleanup will be pretty convincing. There's a nice attempt there from a strike at the end with the smoke onto the corner of Long. You saw Shroud wasn't facing there. Basically, they want to have a crossfire set up. So when his teammate Slimmy starts shooting from the pit, Shroud can pop out and uh, get the crossfire going on and makes it a lot easier to kill those Ts. The Ts had a good read on the situation as well. So they put the smoke down to try and stop that from happening. But obviously, they're on Eco. There's not much they can do. So they will get taken down. But Stu, with this aggression, is really good for Cloud9. That is uh, going to be important to continue against Astralis. We have a pause at the moment. So I believe it's a tactical pause for Astralis. And they definitely need it. I mean, they have a lot of money, around 5 to 6k at this point, in the bank to buy with. And right now, they're six rounds down. And it's not just that they're six rounds down. It's going a bit too good. It, well, a bit too well right now for Cloud9. I mean, the rounds that they are winning are somewhat convincing. So Astralis need to find a way to, you know, really bring momentum back into their, into their favor. And we are going to see that they are slowly buying up here, at least on our screen. We can see they're slowly buying up here. And uh, we do see an orb onto the device, as expected. But it's more or less what they do with the buy, as opposed to, uh, you know, what they're buying in. Because they had so much money, they can always get an optimal buy in this round. Yes. So that's what they're always going to do. One, one, one problem, not just a round lead, but Cloud9 are winning these rounds with loads of players surviving as well. So they've got bags of money in the bank. And bearing in mind there are five rounds remaining, they should be good for most, if not all of them. One of the players has got 14k in the bank, for example, another's over 10k as well. So uh, Cloud9 have uh, lots of confidence, lots of money in the bank as well. So they can do whatever they want in these coming rounds. And again, a situation where even if Astralis win a round, Going to be uh, full buys coming out for Cloud9. And they're already, at this point, with so much money in the bank, they're already rocking double orps, actually. So uh, they have, they can even change things up should they lose a round, as we saw G G2 doing on cash when they had a big lead. So uh, we'll see how that continues. One thing we haven't seen from uh, Astralis just yet is a big, big old B split. We've seen some, uh, some efforts towards B, but uh, generally speaking, you know, we haven't seen, you know, B set piece coming into play from Astralis. We haven't really even seen them really focus on taking over kind of CT side of middle, which uh, you don't always have to commit towards B, but early into the round as a, as a part of your default where you're kind of clearing out space, you can try to pot flash the, the close position towards the doors, then try to use an orb, your orper to try to just look in towards B, look in towards A from that uh, double doors position. And then you can try to, and, and if you can get a frag from that spot, or get, you know, if you see nobody, then it either, you know, gives you the impetus to go into a bomb site if you get a kill, or if you, let's say, see nobody that's guarding middle from CT spawn, then you're thinking, okay, there's probably three guys on A. If we do for B split right now, the rotation's really far away, and that's going to be the better play. So you get that info. So it would be good to see more information gathering from Astralis in that sense. But the round has resumed, and already, well, Device is going to pick himself up a kill. Stewie's down, and that's an easy five versus four situation, surely, for Astralis to play from. They got over... Well, they got over a minute and a half to play with. That's amazing. Yeah, seems device was just waiting for Stewie's cheekiness. Stewie does not respect smoke grenades whatsoever. 
and sometimes he'll get punished for that lack of respect. So, for, again, a very big early advantage for Astralis. But there's still an AWP on the map here for the opposing force, so there's lots for them to do. And it's still not going to be easy as far as we'll need to be careful. Nothing trying to offer support. And again, C9 are trying to play like they've got five people here, and it's not going to work out. Astralis have good estimation as to the reaction, perhaps. Moving into an open B bomb site. Nothing knows going to... Get a frag on to Kyabi, so down to a 4 versus 4. Flash comes in from a teammate, he's looking for frags. There are more flashes coming in. That's a bomb in the corner as well. But he can wait time for a team to come in. Skadoodle will trade. Man advantage here for the CTs. That's a great play so far between Nothing and Skadoodle. Nothing is now dead, but he's done his job. And Astralis couldn't get across the doors to plant the bomb. Device is now going to make his way forwards. And there is a lot of time here, but the flank is coming. And we've got... Uh, a really good spot here for Cloud9 with that flank because Slimmy does not have to push him further. All he, has to do, all he has to do is watch for that rotation back. Skadoodle does the work there. The bomb goes down again. Really poor situation here for Device to clutch one versus three. Again, he's, uh, he's starting to run out of time at this point. 20 seconds. He's got to get his skates on and he spots a barrel. Very nice shot from Device. Oh, he misses the no scope. That's not going to work. And it's Shroud with a frag. Cloud9 with the round. 9-2, to two, a 7-round advantage, and it looks like it could only get worse for Astralis. They did not get the bomb down in that round, so they're, they're really running out of money at this point. They've got one good buy left in them. Yeah, they have maximum loss bonus, but that's all well and good. If you've only got two rounds on the board, you're not winning anything, then it's all for nothing. See, I'm going to continue with the double orbs here versus the five AKs of Astralis. And again, Astralis have some reasonable nades, but they're not, they're not on a on a full nade situation and it seems they're looking to go for a fast beat play but those counter flashes wrecked them and they are going to have to be forced to exit the smoke's down as well now so it would be a suicide mission now they will take their uh, somewhat normal map control or at least more standard but they're being very very careful indeed and that's one of the great things about uh, Stewie's aggressive play that it, it causes Astralis to spend more time checking areas because they fear that aggression so we have right now Astralis just running, looking for information on the map. And again, you know, we're not really seeing any forward efforts through the double doors. It is really nice if you try to do that, if you, when you, if you have a, an AWP when you're doing it, because then you can get some really, you know, some of those long range angles towards the A crossover position, as well as into the B doors and, and the window and so on. Then it's really nice, but they're actually going to go for it. Device doesn't carry an AWP, but he's got an AK, so that's going to have to do the trick. They have very limited nades. B is usually the uh, play if you've got very limited nades. And it's Stewie now just looking out the door, out the window. He's only going to get one frag here, nothing coming in, playing around the doors. Only good for another one, and that is a three versus three situation. Is device is able to lock down the back? Now it's a two versus three. So things getting worse here for Cloud9. But can they save it? There is still time to uh, go for this retake, and why not? Yeah, we've got Slemmy coming in from T spawn at the moment. Gonna spot a bit of device there. Device may think he's got an orb or something, but instead he's got a rifle. Both players are going to be flashed though, and that's going to waste a lot of time here for Cloud9. But they have nothing to lose by going for it. So they've got so much money in the bank that's trying to try and continue here. But it's going to be too difficult. Astralis get another round on the board, but again, they're going to be facing a max fight. It's important that Astralis won with three players. That's going to help them get a few extra grenades out as well as guns. But indeed, C9 with too much money in the bank here. Going to be going straight back for the full buy, straight back for the double orps as well. Yeah, I mean, Cloud9 had around 10k on most, most players. So they have, uh, yeah, very mighty buy indeed. And so, oh, we've got two orbs, and already Stewie's going to be one of those orbs getting tagged down there by Device as he crosses towards B. And Astralis decided once again to go for that uh, default kind of round. We've got Dark, they have outside of A long at the moment. And Cloud9 have been giving a lot of respect to Astralis, actually. They haven't really been playing much aggression. We've seen, uh, you know, the, the rounds in which they've been aggressive are the rounds in which Astralis haven't really had anything, any equipment. Kirby's going to be up on short now as we see Zipex there also leading the charge or rather the uh, the hold towards a long they're setting up that a split at the moment with the bomb going with two other players here Semi's able to get the first frag there and the information that the bomb is going towards that position so now it is known what is happening here from Astralis but can Cloud9 get in position in time four versus four yeah the problem for C9 is they don't have control of long or short and they're gonna have to play against that fear and just make their way elsewhere and the, the box site's not even being pushed here, but the C9 are scrambling all over the place now. They're all getting tagged through the smoke, through the doors at the moment. And now goes Skadoodle, he was the only full health player here, so 
Lots of trouble ahead for both teams now because look at the bomb. That's what we're talking about. The bomb's fallen off the ridge and it's forced Astralis into the crosshair of Stewie 2K. And that gives C9 opportunity. He's got a reposition as well. One per side. So uh, I like this adjustment here from Cloud9. Unfortunate turn of events for Astralis, but can they trade? Surely they can trade their worst case scenario. Indeed, Stewie 2K is going to get taken down. Three to one. And again, Shroud has, uh, he has a full buy for the coming round, so he can go for this and try and do as much damage as possible. Yeah, pretty tough position there in uh, first for Stewie. I like that he fell back there. I mean, to, to be honest, he's really expecting someone to at least drop cat, you know, to, to kind of split, to attack the bomb. But uh, it looks like a great round there overall from Astralis. You can see they're really trying to play against the rotation of Cloud9, just really selling that they play, then going for the uh, double back. Now we're going to see uh, a real chance here for, for Astralis to take control back into this match. But they can only get six rounds in this first half now. That's kind of an issue for them. And also, we've got one big buy again from Cloud9 because they had so much money. So full buy for them. What are they going to get with it? We've got the boost coming in on device again. They previously have tried this as well. So quite a sneaky one. Yeah, this is a good way to watch short from a safer position because uh, one issue is if you have an AWPer in T-Spawn, he can't see short. Basically, so you have to get somebody to low tunnel fast, and then that's a problem when you have these short pushes coming in. So that boost is one way to stop any uh, flanks coming in straight down mid from the CTs, as we saw Cloud9 do earlier. Got as far as with control of the short position already. It's a nice deep nade coming in there, but easily avoided by Astralis. Minutes 15 on the clock here, so they've got time to have a poke through middle doors should they choose to. There is a player waiting there for them. This smoke is, I think, on the opposite corner, which allows the T's to have a deeper look towards CT spawn towards A if they want to. Otherwise, you are exposed to the window position. So, again, that suggests that Cloud9 have to put forces over there. And with a smoke in Shrouds, in front of Shroud as well, C9 have no idea what's going on in CT spawn. So, for all they know, it could be a B split coming through. So, a nice fake attempt coming in for Astralis, but Cloud9 just waiting so far, so good, Shroud, second Kyobi. Yeah, that's a nice first kill from Shroud. What else can they get done here, though? We can see, we'll actually see a quick incendiary tossed up as well onto the bomb site to slow things down here for Astralis. Could Doodle finding the head of device there? Oh, another one coming in. It's good, Doodle doing a lot of work here, and it's just Dupree against Force. Not gonna happen. Astralis will lose the round, and Cloud9 take 10, and it's looking quite decisive. Your sight is definitely down. upside down, sir. You may require glasses. 10 to 4 as we move into the last round of the first half. And that, that is vintage Skadoodle there. That's high by power Skadoodle. Hopefully he will uh, make an appearance today as well. Astralis with an AWP and an AK and a bunch of pistols. Not many grenades. So maybe another fast play is in order. And indeed, you can see Kyabi just charging all the way through mid here on his own. Doesn't know what's on the other side of that smoke just yet. You see the position of nothing. Just waiting for Astralis to play their hands. You can deagle through that box. Nothing can get one shot from there. I know where to shoot that, even when they're crouching. Well, it's, it's kind of strange actually. We don't see people wallbanging that very often. But it's, it's very easy to do it, yeah. and it's a very strong position, like it's the one spot you should really be afraid of. You can Molotov it as well, but again, people seldomly do it. It's, it's a very one of those things that's very strange. Probably see more of it in the future, but uh, they are going to be in a lot of trouble because they haven't checked his position, and there it is, easy kill, and that could easily be dealt with that position. And instead, they lose Dupree. And they lose the AK as well, the one AK they had, and Dupree could have sprayed that position with his AK and killed nothing for free there. The bomb goes down as well, but Stewie will be traded. Can they get the plot? Yeah, we've got the, uh, the full auto there. And that's actually going to give a chance here for Astralis. They're into the bomb site now. They can get the bomb planted as well as Zipex punches in those numbers. And now it is time for the retake. Cloud9 have to deal with the man in lower dark. It's Device. It's quite a guy to go up against, especially now he's packing the orb. Oh, he's going to get the tag there. They can gain some ground. Oh, he misses the... He doesn't even get a chance to shoot a second shot, actually. It's uh, Semi with the kill, and now all of a sudden two players from the dark. Astralis realized this, but... They can't take down the player, player outside of the site as well, so there's no way that's safe right now from the Cloud9 side. They're going to pick up 11 rounds in this first half. I never would have expected such a strong result from Cloud9 and Astralis. They are going to be, they desperately will need this pistol round. 
Interestingly, you saw that HE go towards the door from Astralis, and I wonder if they were using that HE as dirt cover to allow the peak to come in a little bit easier by the uh, co-player. Something JW's been doing a lot. That would be, uh, I'd be curious to find out that a little bit later on. But so there we go. Cloud9 with a dominating performance in the first half here versus Astralis. Four rounds on the board. A familiar story from what we've seen today so far with the uh, earlier match. Yeah. And again, it's going to be an important pistol round here for Astralis. And one of the reasons as well is because, you know, Nothing and Stewie have really turned up here in this matchup so far. They're both uh, fragging very well. Nothing is 16 for 7. Stewie is just, uh, just behind him, 15 for 8. So that, that's pretty to see. You know, we've yet to even see, you know, Shroud going off. If Shroud, you know, can go off in the background, there's going to be problems here for, for Astralis. And we're going to have the, uh, the typical smoke there. And Astralis playing around it a little bit, trying to get the information aggressively as to where Cloud9 are going, and they will see where they are going, because they're going straight for them. Uh, the device has to back away, he can't get anything out of that one, and this is a problem because they've closed the distance voluntarily against the Glocks, and the Glocks will reign supreme. The smoke will block them off, though, and that'll slow down the, the round ever so slightly. Stewie 2K, though. Where is Stewie 2K? Let's have a look. Stewie 2K has made his way into the B bomb site, and uh, that is a problem for Astralis. He's opened things up here. The rotation's coming in, and the bomb is in a safe position with an escort as well. And there's a flank, but who's going to win the duel here? This is an important one. Karagun's coming in just at the right time to save Kyabi. He's on one HP, Dan. Yeah, he is on one HP, and he's in dark, and he doesn't feel confident to go through dark because he's so weak. He's going to have to just. Apply for the strength in numbers here with his teammates through the doors. And it's Stewie 2K there. Spots both players coming in. Can't get anything done though. He just tagged down to 16. Oh, no, Carrigan on one HP as well. Oh my god. That is, that's not good. That is not good for Astralis. And they are going to get wrecked here. Great stuff from Cloud9. Picking up the pistol round 12 to 4. As things get increasingly worse here for the Danish side. Indeed, that is a disastrous start to the second half here. Cloud9, four rounds away from taking the first map, and that's got to sit uncomfortably here with Astralis, a team who should feel like they are one of the best in the world. It's the best of three, of course, and it's not over just yet. They can recover. We have seen uh, one pistols and failed second rounds. Overpass will be the second match in this best of three, and Cash will be the decider, should it be required. C9 moving into the tunnel position, just taking initial map control. They will need to spend time to identify if there is some kind of stack here from Astralis, if they're up to any shenanigans hiding anywhere untoward. Well, we get uh, tagged there either way. Looking good here for, uh, for Astralis initially. All they have to do is defend these there. How hard can it be? Good if we go aggressively there in the tunnels and that's like, that could really work out here. The bomb is towards the tunnels as well. If they get control of the tunnels, that's going to be big problems. Oh, it looks like Skadil's holding on, but can he hold on? Yes! He takes down the last player there as well, Kirby, and the bomb will remain safe, and the bomb site has been taken over as well. It was a really nice play from Astralis. They could really have won the round there, but instead it's going to be Cloud9 who are in advantage. Two versus four for Astralis. Well, the bomb's gone down. There's still work to do here. Astralis don't have much to lose, which is a problem for C9 because look how heavily tagged they are. Stroud's going to be a very important player. Oh, they just looked away at the wrong time. That is brutal for Device. Street 2K with perfect timing there. Saves his team a lot of money as well. This is going really well for Cloud9. I am quite, quite, quite surprised right now. A little bit impressed. Just a little bit, James. Just a little bit. We'll have to see uh, how long they can continue their dominance against Astralis, who've yet to really post anything uh, that's all that uh, you saw here against Cloud9. So far, Cloud9 more or less have been running over them. And they've been, I liked how proactive Cloud9 were on their CT side as well. And that's one of the reasons why they got so far ahead early on. And now Astralis have a full save as well. So pretty much expecting to lose this round. Astralis in that horrible position. Shroud got his bell rung, but it matters not because his team are going to come and win this round. He has a max in. It don't matter. Carrying on the device. Not long will they be around. That's, that's, that's the kind of uh, lurk that just irritates you. When a guy is basically T-spawn and your team are in B, and you get taken down. But you got to move on. 14 to 4, 10 round lead here for C9. Looking very good now. It is a long road to recovery here for Astralis. It is very long indeed. We've got uh, Skizul, I think, looks like he might be, okay, no, he's, he's going to toss away the Mac Ted. He, 
He's going to toss away the Mac 10 and pick up an orb, of course. Let's see if he gets something at the start of the round. I don't think Device is going to challenge him. Yeah, he's not going to be liking that uh, challenge early in the round. So instead, it's going to be Cloud9 taking over long here. With a flash bang in from Stewie as he goes in aggressively. Where's the trade at? He got shrouded. He will get the trade. And that is long under control here for Cloud9. Nothing also creeping in towards B here. And he's going to get an engagement. This Dupree that wins that. Very important. Astralis uh, still in trouble being a man without one man, but uh, Cloud9 just down to three. At least they have control along, though. They can work with that. Yeah, it seems Cloud9 trying to cause anarchy all over the map. It can be hard to call as a CT side when such madness is going on. Fights through smokes, charges on both sides at the same time. But things have calmed down now. Very perfect smoke there to stop Device from being able to hold an angle. Could go for a pot shot, but maybe he doesn't want to reveal his position just yet. He can go for some jumping orb shots. They commonly hit from this position. Bombard comes in, and there we go. Straight in the face, Dan. Two versus four. That is a big frag right there, and Chad has to go down and collect the bomb, and he's going to be able to do that. Plum will come in, but so will the CTs as the bomb goes down. Very nice flash, actually, there from uh, Skadoodle to uh, stave off the CTs just a little bit longer. Keep Shroud safe, but he's got to connect these one shots. He cannot be off with any of these shots. There they go, the CTs four at once. There's a quick frag from Shroud. He's to get something else done here. Skadoodle with a quick kill device, bringing one back, and Zipex to finish it all off. The defuse will come in, and Astralis will win a much needed round, but still, there's so much to be done. They are so far behind. 14 to 5 is en route. The problem though for Astralis is that the C9 side are probably going to have a better buy than them because of the money they already have in the bag. So nothing but problems ahead potentially here for Astralis. They will constantly be tested in what remains of this half. Lots of Molotovs here for C9 as well. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to, uh, lot to be asked of Astralis right now. They've got the two orbs. And one of the uh, awful things about being in this kind of a spot on the CT side is you're, you're always going to be at the mercy of the T side because they get to dictate what's going on a lot more than you. As uh, for you to play aggressively, it's, it's much more risky. You give up a lot of your inherent defensive advantages. So we're going to see Cloud9 opening things up with just, uh, you know, again, typical default. They've got Slemmy towards top mid, outside of a long. Skadoodle watching over mid with the orb. And we're going to see the progression down from tunnels in towards middle and short as well. I would like to see Cloud9 doing the kind of entry, entry fragging work just inside those double doors. But they're going to opt out of that this time around. And they're going to go straight for Catwalk. We've got Stewie there leading the charge. And of course, on the, uh, on the A bomb site, you've got Dupree's actually playing a pretty strong position if there is to be a set piece on the A bomb site. It's a pretty nice spot indeed. And it does look like. C9 are thinking about harassing A, but the, they still have players towards B at the moment, so it could always be you know, basically selling an A set piece and then going for the drop back in towards B. One issue for Astralis here is that in Karagrin's position, you normally want the Orpa to have flashbangs, so he can flash for the long guy and provide support for him, so he can flash for the guy who's playing on the site as well if there's a short push coming in, but he's got no flashes whatsoever. So uh, that might be a problem going forward here. We've got players on the high ground and the low ground. Kiabi's getting taken down straight away elsewhere, but the, the, the hold of A could still be strong here for Astralis. We've got Boots going back up, actually, and that could be a 2k for Dupree. Indeed it will be. The bomb is down now. It's a 4 versus 3. CT still have control of long, very strongly as well. They've got a crossfire so they can protect Dupree from the low ground as well. Device gets taken down, down to three versus two now. Both players coming in on short for the T. Sorry, nothing's on the low ground now. And uh, he's going to take down Dupree, but indeed there are still two players on long. So problems continue. Seven seconds remain now and Skidoodle's down to the Glock and he won't get anything else done. Great damage done by C9 though, you have to pay attention to that. That will still be a problem for Astralis who only take one of those two ops into the next round. Yeah, Astralis uh, in a pretty, well, okay position when it comes to the buy. C9 down to the half buy. Let's see what they can get out of that. Gonna have a few nays to uh, scrap together along with the Tech 9s and the Kevlar's and so on. So, they can, they've got stuff to work with in this round. Not expecting really to win it though. Just get that damage and keep the pressure up. And already we can see that uh, a lot of nays tossed towards Carrigan there on long. We've got Cloud9, however, moving to more towards the middle and B areas on the map, looking to perhaps just really barrel down in any players from Astralis who are in middle, and that would be Kirby. He's out in the open here with a rifle. He's going to get flashed up. This could be bad, but there's no trade fragger. The trade fraggers are too late, and Kirby's going to survive there. And the entire lineup of Cloud9 will be decimated as Astralis pick up yet another round. 
Important for Astralis. They survived with all their players. So they'll, they'll finally have a bit of money in the bank. And let's see what C9 ought to do. The big guns coming out immediately. Nothing dropping one of the big green guns, which I think is going to be thrown over to someone. It seems G2K might... Actually, he's going to be Shroud. Has he got a... Is he playing a spawn? No, I have no idea what's going on with their guns. They're throwing the up all over the place, but it is Scudido indeed who's going to be carrying on with that. So let's see. Ooh, device back to his usual tricks here. He's, we've seen action and success with him from this position before. Likes to face the wall to his left in case he thinks that flashbangs are coming in. And that's, that's the difference there. Often you'll find uh, support for the offer, but he's very confident just playing that position on his own. And again, he's just waiting for a flash to come in. And there it is. He manages to avoid it. Doesn't get the snap onto Stewie, though. However, he manages to escape unscathed. So, some information there for Cloud9 with regards to the setup of Astralis. Yeah, Device is really, really good at that. I think he's a, he's a bit notorious for it. You see Cloud9 were somewhat expected. Now we've got the uh, the push back into middle. It smoked off. Devi oh, Device has smoked off them, actually. And uh, they'll just wait a little bit. Now Cloud9, they've, uh, they're down to 50 seconds left in the round. They start getting some more forward positions in. Stewie's working on that. He's creating some presence as well, showing some gunfire towards short. So right now, right now Astralis, all they have to do, they just have to wait at the moment. They, they can't really do anything else. Just got to wait for Cloud9 to make a move. Now the bomb is towards the, the tunnels area, so that's a big tell for us that it's going to be a B split. And uh, that's exactly what's going to happen here. We've got the uh, nades coming in now. Zipex is behind the smoke and CT, his weakest up, up to Kirby to hold this down by himself. The spray comes in. That's two frags for Kirby, but still more action. Nothing still not in the sight just yet because the main push didn't do anything. So now Dupree gets a one versus one. He gets nothing. Nothing can still save this here for Cloud9, but they've got 10 seconds. He's got to get the plant down, but the bomb is lost. And that will be the round. Skadoodle. Caught in no man's land here, but surely not. Yeah, it's going to go down in the end. Cloud9 did a good job of making Astralis use loads of grenades in the early to mid part of the round there. But again, when it comes down to the guns, all the kills going the way of Astralis here. Very nice hold by his device and Kyabi around the CT spawn area. So C9 completely shut down. Their loss bonus is starting to rise, but they're back down to the pistols for this round at least. Double Ops continuing for Astralis. I think we have a pause in, actually. Presumably a tactical one. Nice and early with a six round lead here for Cloud9. So very smart stuff. Their money's on about $3,000 on average. And now it's Astralis' turn to build the bank. Theirs will be around the 8K mark at the moment. Yeah, lots of decisions to make. And uh, it's always nice to be in this position on, on the T side. Because again, you, you have so much room to work with. You can do with so many things. It's, it's not like being on the CT side, we've got to take a really huge risk and, and an, uh, an untimely aggression, perhaps, or an aggression that could work out to be untimely. Then you get shut down. Instead, Cloud9 can, can say, okay, well, we haven't tried this yet. This seems strong for them. This seems weak for them. You know, just as, you know, just assess all those options, calm down a little bit, and get your heads in the right place. Get on the same page. And here we go. We'll get to see what their plan is. Of course, first of all, it's just a bit of a half buy. And once that's out of the way, we'll see their true intentions. But it's the voice again with those uh, pushing shenanigans. Let's see if he gets something out of this. Looks like there's no, well, not very many players close to him. So he's not going to be getting more than one kill immediately, at least. See, nothing's going for it though, nothing's actually charging and Karen gets a frag on over by B and it's going to be nothing it takes down Dupree, picking up a, an M4 here. Would, would it be cool if he got the AWP but it's going to be Kirby with another frag towards mid. They spotted the bomb as well, so it should be easy to finish off the rest. Kirby going for a taps there, manages to play the piano on Doodle's face. And the last player will get finished off as well. So, 14 to 9 now, Astralis continue to charge. Cloud9 required two rounds then, but we've seen more than one time that North American teams can get stuck on that 14th round. Can they take it to 15? Coming in for another bye. Skidoodle going to be on the AWP again. Got himself some Kevlar as well. So we'll see if this is the round maybe that Cloud9 can take. What is their initial strategy going to be? Are we going to see Device going for another boost? Indeed we are. He's going to be short, uh, fast onto short. And with four players onto uh, the B-Halls, look at the fight, he's charged all the way into the middle area. No yeah. fear whatsoever, we have that smoke coming in now. That's crazy, because uh, also Astralis putting three people towards B. This is something they used to do, and it could work out. Lately, the entry frags are insane right now.
now from Cloud9. They completely wipe out Astralis on the B side of the map. That's ridiculous. Astralis had three players there. They had device aggressive in mid. They knew what was coming, and yet they couldn't stop the machine, the engine that is Cloud9 on Dust2 right now. Karagas is going to be coming in. He'll catch Stewie off guard and get the frag. But the two versus three, there is some time here. They're going to go for it, it looks like, with that frag. But they need to be very decisive with these kills because there is time is really of the essence right now. Only two flashes left here for Cloud9. That last Molotov coming in. Counter forces away onto the site. That goes Stroud. The clock continues to tick though, and Device is making his escape. It seems. Astralis have some money in the bank here, but C9 on game point here on Dust2. That is a problem. Swimming so gets taken down for free. The interesting thing is, if you're if you're full health, you don't need to leave the site if it's planted on default. You can save inside the site itself or even towards car if you've planted it on double stack, so uh, maybe those kills might be avoidable for Cloud9. But anyway, they, they find themselves a game point, and they've got six of them. I mean, that was, that, that, to me, that's just crazy, because Astralis, you know, playing that 3B three, three setup, sometimes they do that to actually encourage the way that they set up the players. They do it to encourage people to actually attack the B-bomb side because they do it in a way which is very suggestive that they have players towards A. But anyway, we have a quick long take coming in from Cloud9. We've got nothing straight in. Oh, he's so good at the moment. Great kill onto Carrigan. And now he's going to push through the smoke to claim one more life. Sipex will go down. Who will be the next victim? We've got Device coming in. Nothing will turn away there. Spots Device through the smoke, gets the third frag in a row. And nothing is going to be storming onto the day bomb site. It is well and truly in Cloud9's control. And there's surely nothing Dupree can do. One versus five. The bomb site is on. Uh, well, sorry, the bomb is on the bomb site at the moment. And Cloud9 surely will win this round and take the map. Yeah, that should be GG unless something absolutely absurd happens here, but it's not very likely. And uh, of course, nothing to get the final headshot there. Great to see him playing so strong. And again, yeah. this is a team who didn't qualify for the major. This is the uh, most important tournament they're going to be playing anytime soon. Definitely, definitely the biggest one as well. So, first game goes the way of Cloud9. Can Astralis bring it back on overpass? We will find out after the break.